Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on how to clean, maintain and restore Alps switches. It was requested by several people as there is not really a very uh, in-depth guide on this apparently and I have several Alps boards some of which were very dirty when I got them so uh, I have some experience with this. Note that this video doesn't cover completely dead switches because if a switch is completely dead then it will have to be desoldered replace with a new switch and sold it in again and there are already several videos on how to do that so I'm not going to cover that uh, in this video. Now um, common solutions to opening up the switches include using screwdrivers and pliers and that sort of stuff uh, but the problem with that is that it's uh, metal on plastic so it will scratch the surface of the switches uh, which I don't really like so I devised a method that uh, doesn't leave a mark at all and uh, which uh, leaves the switch nice and clean and it works quite well. So uh, you can do this with some pretty basic tools. What you will need is one toothpick, two cocktail sticks, this type, and some canned compressed air uh, or something similar to clean dust out of the switches. Um, optionally you can use some lube as well if the switch is feeling very scratchy or if you want to slightly quieten the switch um, and finally you will need something to pull the keycaps with. Um, now I use a wire puller, one of these, um, but if you want to just pull one or two keycaps, you can make one yourself if you don't have one of them. Um, I used to do it with this. Um, so it's essentially the same tool. I just made it out of two bent paper clips uh, and you can do the same trick with it if you don't want to buy a keycap puller. However, if you want to clean a whole board or a large amount of switches, I would recommend you get a keycap puller because it's not that expensive. And um, although these work, it is much, much faster with the keycap puller. So first thing we want to do is pry off a keycap. So you take the keycap puller or the uh, paper clips, if you go for that, you stick it in like that, and then you twist it diagonally and then simply pull it off like that. There you go. Um, you can see this is a SKCM white Alps switch, so complicated white Alps switch, a clicky one. And um, you can see two tabs, one at the bottom here and one at the top there. And the uh, tabs, they kind of clip behind something here, something here, and on the other side. And that's what keeps the top part of the shell in place. Now, fortunately, these Alp switches were designed in such a way that you can take the top part of the shell off without actually desoldering the switches. So that's very nicely designed, it's very clever. And that's what allows you to do maintenance on these switches fairly easily. So what you want to do is pry these two tabs away from the top of the shell and then you can just take the top off. So what you want to do is pry them apart using the toothpick because that's nice and narrow. So what you do is you slide it in between like that. And then you widen the gap with one of the cocktail sticks because the cocktail stick is thicker than toothpick. So you stick that in and you stick that in, just remove this. And you stick that in enough to pry the tabs the tab away from the retainers. As you can see, that's worked well here. Then you do the same thing on the other side. Start with the toothpick. Oh, let's keep looking at the actual keyboard instead of the camera, might be easier. All right, stick that in. Get the other toothpick, put that in as well. There you go. Now at this point, the side tabs no longer keep the top of the shell uh, retained. So it's fairly loose. All you need to do is just jiggle this toothpick, preferably at a bit of an angle, and the top of the shell will slowly come up. You can do the same thing on that side a little bit. But at some point it will be high up enough that you can simply take the top of the switch off. 
this is not easy to do while looking at the camera. There you go. Simply pluck it off. And there is the switch. So here you can see the parts. I'll just take the slider off. That's the spring. The easiest way to handle the spring is by using one of the toothpicks. Simply work it like that. Put that somewhere where it can't roll away, like in the in the keycap. And there is a click leaf here. Cool. I'll take that out as well. So first thing to do is make sure it's free of dust. Now, as you can see, this one is very free of dust, uh, but yours might not be. So what you do is you take the canned air and you give it a, give it a good give it a good clean out. You can do this with a variety of tools. Canned air is probably the fastest and one of the more thorough ones. Get some more in there. So make sure it's nice and clean. And then next thing, you will want to look at the click or tactile leaf if your switch has one. So this is what it looks like. Let's see if I could focus on that here. Come on, you know you want to focus. So you can see the teeth, the, the leaf spring here is at a certain angle. Now what you might want to, if the switch is no longer all that clicky or that tactile, is to increase the angle between that. And you can do that most easily by simply sticking one of the toothpicks. Oh dear, this is hard with one hand one of the toothpicks in between the leaf like that and simply gently push it so you wider the gap a little bit. Don't go absolutely nuts on this because if you do that you might over tactilize the switch and it might feel really weird uh, and it might also not make the feel of the board uniform. Ideally what you want is for the contact leaf, which is that thing, this little thing, and the tactile leaf to nearly meet. Um, so you might want to bend the contact leaf inwards a little bit as well. This is easiest to do with two, two toothpicks at the same time to just kind of um, bend it inwards towards the middle like that, except do it symmetrically, which I can't with one hand. And then once you're done with that, you can uh, put the tactile leaf back in. It goes at this end of the switch. <laughs> Make sure it stands up. Cool, so that should look like that. So it should nearly meet in the middle. Let's see if I can shine the light on that. So it nearly meets in the middle. That's, that's kind of what you want. Then look at the slider. Uh, the slider has got one side with a little indent the other doesn't have uh, the side doesn't have that indent and what you want is for the slider to be nice and smooth if it's not smooth so if it's scratched or something or um, uh, feels a bit feels a bit strange then you might want to apply some lube to it you can also use lube to um, quieten the switch a little bit. It doesn't really matter too much what lube you use, I think. Uh, just don't use any water-based ones and preferably use ones that don't dry out all that quickly. Um, so apply your choice of lube if you want. And then it's time to reassemble the switch. So after you've put the tactile leaf back in, you get the spring. Please don't roll away. Okay. And easiest way again to do it is with the toothpick. Just kind of get it up there. Retain it with your finger. Stick the toothpick in the middle on that little round thing. And then just let that spring slide down on that. Oh, fuck, this is not easy to do. Like that. Okay, 
So it doesn't really matter if it's not standing up as long as the, the bottom is on that circle. Then take the slider, make sure that the side with the little indent in it is facing the contact leaf, so that side. Put that on the spring. Like that. Then take the shell. If your shell is Alps branded, like that, like this one, uh, you'll want to make sure that the Alps logo is away from the switch plate. So in this case, the logo goes on the bottom side. Then what you do is you kind of slide it over the slider. And over the switch plate and tactile leaf, like that. It will usually not immediately line up with the hole. So what you do is you press it down slightly and then use a toothpick to guide it towards the middle and then just press down on it. There you go, that's fixed. Put the keycap back on. And works again, works fine. Right, so that's been this video tutorial on how to uh, clean out and maintain ALP switches uh, and restore clickiness and tactility if necessary. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, uh, good luck restoring your ALP switches. Bye.